We can powerfully introduce ourselves to open intelligence in a short moment through stopping thinking. When we stop thinking, what remains? The power to know what's looking through your eyes. You don't really have to define it in any other way than intelligence. And it's so simple, you know, this intelligence of the universe looking through our eyes. But not growing up with that recognition, it, it seems foreign at first for some of us. Maybe we've been introduced to open intelligence many times throughout our lives. But what I found when I came to the Balanced Shoe Training was a direct confirmation of what's looking so that I could stop seeking for what is the nature of reality. Of course, there are all kinds of philosophical ideas and frameworks that we can compare and analyze and talk about and think about. And for me, that was exhausting to really philosophize about the nature of reality. It didn't bring me the direct result of, of relief, of confirmation that all is well. I mean, that's all I wanted out of a philosophy is to know that I am perfect as I am and I fit in and I'm not flawed and needing to be fixed. And the same with everyone else. So this training offers immediate benefit, confirming that all of us are perfect as we are, as open intelligence, regardless of our thoughts, emotions, and sensations, because we have all kinds of thoughts, emotions, and sensations. One minute we feel happy and easygoing and then we get angry at something and we start to feel agitated and worried and, and then we're somewhere in between, not really noticing anything that's going on. So if we were to philosophize about it, we could spend many, many hours comparing, trying to figure out the cause of everything and just constantly searching for relief and trying to probably get rid of negativity and bring in more positive. So in this training, it's short moments of open intelligence. Let all data, the thoughts, emotions, sensations, be exactly as they are and rest potently and deeply as this open intelligence. The data are inseparable from open intelligence. If you look right now, where is the... Can you find the location of any of the thoughts that you're thinking? Can you pinpoint them? Do they have a shape? Do they have a, a beginning and an end? The same with emotions. Do they reside somewhere? Do they have a beginning and an end? Can you find the ones from your past and see the ones in your future and capture them? They're all just arising and self-releasing. Each here and now, a spontaneous self-release. Like any image in a mirror, it's there and then it releases. It doesn't stick in the mirror, nor does it harm the mirror or nor does it improve the mirror. It's just a fleeting image. And so too are our data. They're just fleeting, unpredictable, ceaseless. And in seeing this in short moments many times, we begin to relax. I started to see that, you know, something worrying about who I am, how do I fit into this cosmos, I could just take short moments of not getting involved in that, just let the thoughts arise and self-release. But that takes practice. When you spend a lifetime indulging in a certain way of thinking, it has a lot of momentum, right? You've, we've got deep tracks of thinking in a certain way. So when we hear, let it be as it is, for me it took a lot of reminders of short moments. Many reminders. And I still remind myself today to just take short moments when, whenever I find myself either indulging in my thinking or avoiding or replacing things, letting it be as it is. And from doing this, there's just an inherent and natural balanced view. We don't fall into extremes. So initially, you know, I had ideas of, especially around food, I mean, a lot of the practices that I was involved with, it, you know, it meant you could eat one meal a day and that was it. And so the rest of the day I spent my time thinking about how hungry I was. <laughs> and I was like, man, I need to conquer this. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be hungry. And I just was just so consumed in the thoughts about hunger that I couldn't relax. And I didn't find immediate relief. I thought that I need to somehow conquer this sensation of hunger. 
that's that I just saw that that was too complicated. This training is it, very, it really simplifies the nature of reality. Open intelligence, what's looking through your eyes, inseparable from all data. All data have their essence, their source then, their fundamental identity is this open intelligence. Without open intelligence, there would be no data. So it's a very simple fact of reducibility that open intelligence and data are inseparable. And that simplifies all philosophical inquiries. I mean, you can look at all data and you can analyze them with a microscope and then you can go further and use an electron microscope and then you can go to the particle accelerator and smash them open and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and, deeper and there's nothing there but pure space. So what does that say about your thoughts, your emotions, and your sensations? They are like pure space. But how does that feel on a daily basis? If you were to say, oh, my anger is pure space, my anger is pure space, my anger is pure space, <laughs> you would just go mad. So there's no need to intellectually come to a conclusion about how all data are like pure space. We instinctively recognize this, where you just know without a doubt that that's the way it is, and you live a life of benefit. And that's in this Four Mainstays lifestyle, that's what I see occurring in my experience, where I no longer have to take these extreme measures of thinking that I need to master all of my sensations in order to be enlightened and know the nature of reality, or whatever the ideas are. Sometimes if I'm... <laughs> in the beginning I tested it. Okay, hunger's coming up. What if I let it be as it is? Okay, should I eat? Should I not eat? You just take short moments with all of the, the thoughts that are arising and self-releasing. One moment I'd be starving and I'd let it be as it is, and then I'd be thinking about... Um, I don't know... A uh, better book a flight to India. Or a better book a flight home from India. And then the thought of food comes again, and then it's on to something else. So the data are like a, they're a flow. Go with the flow by allowing it to be as it is for short moments many times. And this lifestyle of the Four Mainstays simply supports and enlivens the recognition of who we actually are as open intelligence, this beneficial intelligence. So we have a balanced perspective, not needing to go into any kind of extreme of yes, it's this, and no, it's not that, or it is this, it's not that, oneness, not oneness. We don't need to get so involved in that. It's just not required to be open intelligence. You already are open intelligence. Um, and it's, it's interesting to look at how we, how we use our mind to learn to be a human society. I mean, you can look at conventional learning and it's all based on gathering data, accumulating data and sorting it in positive, negative and neutral and then coming up with all kinds of theories and philosophies and frameworks so people can live together, hopefully. It doesn't seem to be working out so well. So, by relying on this, on nature's intelligence and letting data be as they are, we just are smarter. We're naturally more aligned with what is needed in each given time, place, and circumstance. And that can include book learning, too. You know, I like to read on the internet about different topics and learn more about things. I find it's easier to learn things now. I'm not so distracted by need to get it right, need to memorize it. There's just so much more openness and clarity available. And I can't even pinpoint it as here, really. It's just, uh, it's ever expanding. And it just feels so natural and actually enjoyable to live not locked into this idea of a limited human who has to strive for survival. And so the, the Four Mainstays lifestyle, we have the short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. Wherever you are, if you're getting distracted or you feel happy or you feel sad, remember to take short moments. If you want to stop thinking to identify open intelligence, that's fine, but at some point you don't... You know, stopping thinking isn't the practice. That would be a lot of effort, like, okay, stop, oh, stop thinking, oh, stop thinking. It's just, um, for me, it's short moments of complete relaxation. 
What a gift. I didn't know how to relax before coming here. I really didn't know how to relax. Even ingesting all kinds of things, I still wasn't relaxed. And, but I could see it was because I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to work it out. And I could give myself a, a vacation from trying to figure anything out, just resting as I am with all of my thoughts, all of the emotions, all the sensations. And we can all test that throughout the day. And you realize, wow, I am connected to this intelligence. I am it, plain and simple. And more and more that just is confirmed and sealed open. The, the trainer has been very helpful for me to uphold my practice, to encourage me, to support me. I learned so much from my trainer. You know, just somebody who's gone before me and who's tested out this lifestyle. Having somebody that I can write an email to at any time of the day, I can meet with this person, I can listen to the talks that they've given over the years, I can learn from their role modeling. Um, just seeing how a person operates from this vantage of open intelligence that was so new to me. I hadn't met people operating from open intelligence before I met Balance View. I'd only met people trying to figure out life and struggle and then just giving me their opinions of what they, you know, what they thought was right. So then there's the training media, which, you know, we like to do trainings and things we're interested in. And training in the nature of mind and this education in the nature of who all of us are as humans, it's so vital. I mean, the, the training is, um, it has to be current to this time, place, and circumstance. It can't be language that was only appropriate 2,000 years ago or 100 years ago. It has to kind of upgrade to, to meet many people. And today we're all connected on the internet, just all of us, you know, even people that are so remote, even if they have a mobile phone, they can get online somehow. So we see that we're able to communicate with people from all all over the world in a simple way. And we just come up with terminology that can fit with everyone. But actually when you're hanging out there's no you know, formal language required other than you know, we're just resting naturally. We see that this open intelligence is the same in you and you and you and anyone else. It isn't a different open intelligence. So it becomes a very simple way of using our intelligence together for the benefit of all. Not, op not intelligence for the sake of, you know, creating more boundaries, more defense systems, and more corporations, more of this, more of that. It's <laughs> the benefit of all. That's what we want now, you know, whether we think about it or not. And then the fourth mainstay of the global community, and that's so important to actually see people like I saw in my trainer, to see other people who are living this lifestyle and they're relaxed, authentic, open, where there's not a lot of discussion about the nature of reality. Like just coming together and serving and creating amazing, amazing projects and speaking to each other in dignified and respectful ways and creativity is just pouring forth, people shining brightly. I mean, this is the healthiest group of people. I've ever come across. If you're interested in health, it's, I see, yeah, we just naturally align with our healthy mind, body. It's all available. I saw that when I stopped trying to figure everything out, I could relax and then I was immediately healthier. Immediately. Okay. Oh, the self release of data. How is that beneficial? <laughs> well, let's say you're focused on a problem and you, you're just so involved in it. You're, so in, you're thinking about it, you're worrying. Short moments of letting all that worry be as it is, there's immediate relief. There's, the data can't be found to have a nature independent from this vast, peaceful, wide open intelligence. So we relax again and again. And, I, I see that the solutions are more available than I'm not freaking out and locked into the problem. The, the solution focus is naturally opened up. 
But just to know that, um, yeah, the inexhaustibility of open intelligence, like the, the fear of death starts to loosen its grip. And all of these things that have held us in such a tight grip, they start to open up. When we see they're just arising and, and they're self-releasing in and of themselves. You don't have to do anything to make your data self-release. They just do. They're inseparable from bright, vast, open intelligence. And more and more you instinctively recognize that.